Hey, how's it going there, folks? Welcome back here to a Friday night. It is about 11.21 p.m. here, California time, August 16th, 2024. Latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D globe shows a 2.8 into the Indonesia Islands area. Also got uh, a little bit of movement there happening in Southern California. Let's go ahead and check in on this area first. Uh, and figures, it's in our same areas that we've been watching here recently. It's kind of odd how... Uh, these three specific locations are seeing earthquake activity roughly at about the same time. Notice those red circles there indicating movement in the last hour. Of course, got some activity stirring up here off of the Puente Hills Thrust Fault. A couple smaller microquakes here in the last hour. Uh, a little uncertain on if there was two of them or not. Uh, there's a 1.5 and a 1.5 roughly at the same time. The only difference here is going to be the depth there for the earthquake. Uh, location about six miles or f five miles there so uh, could be maybe just one quake who knows they'll get to it eventually as far as the usgs uh, in correcting that also some movement up here across the uh, bakersfield area where we're seeing a 1.1 in the last hour uh, 17 earthquakes here in the last 24 hours so that adds a uh, looks like a total tally here of about 650 earthquakes there did they drop some uh, I thought I checked last night and it was 667, so <laughs> maybe they're pulling some of the quakes out here. Who knows? But uh, either way, still seeing some earthquake activity out here. And also over here across the Ridgecrest area uh, with a little spike of an earthquake, uh, 1.0. Nothing big, but uh, still, you know, be on guard out here. It's a good time to be on guard with this ever-increasing earthquake activity out here recently in the Southern California area. Uh, Northern California, roughly about the same. We really haven't seen any major increase in earthquake activity up here. Bay Area, fairly quiet, aside from a couple smaller quakes there. Uh, in the San Francisco region, outside of Reno, got a little bit of movement here north of Dayton. Um, let me see where this is at. North of Silver City, a couple smaller earthquakes here from earlier this morning. And... Um, somewhat shallow out there in the Nevada desert could have something to do with maybe some hot springs out there a little uncertain but uh, nothing major going on out there for now Cascadia subduction zone got a couple smaller quakes here from uh, earlier today 1.9 and a 1.1 on that note let's double check the trimmer map here tonight where we got uh, about 517 epicenters of trimmer mainly underneath the Washington area and that's how it's been here in the past Probably about the past four days here. Um, let's go ahead and pull up the last week of activity where we're looking at about 2,625 epicenters of trimmer in that cluster there underneath the Washington area just outside of Seattle. That's trimmer occurring way down into the subduction zone level itself of the Cascadia, roughly about 35, 45 miles, uh, 45 kilometers or so into that area also a little bit here in northern california extreme southern end as well um, aside from that though no major earthquake activity to report across the pacific northwest for now yellowstone national park nothing showing up there but as always i do want to double check that so let's go over here to uh, this seismograph stations where they all look fairly quiet this is some wind event from earlier showed up uh, across numerous seismograph stations as a uh, darker blue but uh, that's about it. No earthquake activity. Texas region outside of Pecos, still seeing some movement out in the oil fields. And uh, not a whole lot of newer activity to report across the eastern portion of the country for now. Uh, most of the activity here today on the globe uh, has been, uh, well, looks like we got some newer activity down across New Zealand with a four pointer coming in fairly recently, North Island. Also a uh, 5.7 into the Tonga Trench here. That showed up here on the USGS map as well. About 70 miles deep here into the subduction zone. Uh, lacking activity once again across Papua New Guinea eastward uh, through the Solomon Islands and Vanuatu region. So we should see these fill in here eventually uh, as far as that seismic uh, gap zone there. Uh, let's see what else we got. Some renewed activity up on the Kuril Kamachaka. That's another area we've been watching pretty closely here. Uh, 
fairly deep for that earthquake as well. 5.2 into the northern edge here of the Kuril Kamchatka area. Now, of course, this region is, uh, I think, is fairly well primed for a big earthquake. It's been uh, a long time since we've seen any major rupture activity out here, and this one can produce some big ones. So uh, we'll continue to keep an eye on it. It is a fairly lengthy subduction zone as well, and a lot of strain and stress builds up out here against this area in a short amount of time period. We've got uh, some reinforcement in the strain from the North American plate scooting down to the south, the Eurasia plate to the southeast, of course the Pacific plate subducting underneath here, and uh, all this builds up strain. And uh, again, it doesn't take hundreds of years to build up the potential for a large earthquake activity out here, and it's it's been a little while. Japan region got a handful of earthquakes out there as well today. Uh, the latest of 4.8 into the Japan Trench, about 33 miles or so, uh, just off the east coast there of Japan. Uh, Alaska area, I uh, got a little swarm going on here outside of Anchorage, a 3.7 this morning, a couple other smaller quakes as well. Uh, that is off of this big fault system here, the Castle Mountain Fault. Uh, for now, just a couple smaller quakes in that area, but, uh, you know, that's a major region for some large earthquakes as well up there in Alaska. Beautiful region, but uh, uh, potentially hazardous for earthquake activity for sure. Uh, there's that migration going on here across the Hawaii area still. Nothing changed. I mean, we haven't seen any uh, major eruption activity out here. I'm going to just double check things here and see what we got as far as the seismograph stations go. Uh, a little bit of earthquake activity here in the last 12 hours. Looks a little bit more active uh, than what we've seen here yesterday. So maybe things are getting ready to pick up. But uh, yeah, there's a, definitely a, a decent amount of earthquake activity there. And it looks like a little bit more than what's showing up here on the map. So we'll continue to keep an eye on that uh, tilt meter here across the area. A fairly neutral. Nothing changing here since the uh, magma intrusion at the end of July. Uh, far as the overall deformation pattern here at Kilauea Summit area, let's see what we got. Yeah, going up a little bit. There's our stationary event from last night, or from uh, yesterday. Starting to go back up here. The overall trend shows that we're, uh, well, we're above the previous level reached here. Uh, back in the end of May when we've seen that huge magma displacement there from the summit off to the upper east rift zone and now we've recharged here so it's just a matter of time before the show gets started out here I feel in terms of something going on it just can't uh, sit like this forever uh, so we'll continue to keep an eye on that as always um, let's see what else we got here across the rest of the globe Mediterranean area fairly quiet aside from a couple smaller smaller quakes there in the region um, Iceland area still seeing some threes up there. So uh, Let's go double check see what's going on up here at Iceland It's another area where we've been watching some elevated inflation going on there Although this earthquake activity in the last 12 hours shows uh, roughly around this region this volcanic activity we're a volcano region out in the rift zone. Little 3.1. Far as the area around the Blue Lagoon, tourist attraction area out there, and Grindavik, where we've seen our last couple eruptions, pretty quiet. Not a whole lot of activity stirring up out there for now. Uh, if we bring up the extremely small negative microquakes, that adds a little bit more uh, in depth definition, uh, definition here of where the earthquake activity. Uh, is occurring in that small range here and it looks like it's uh, got a pretty broad area out here this whole region is um, quite inflated um, so we should see things happen in terms of the eruption activity here soon the question is where's it going to be got to watch the earthquake activity right now it's fairly lengthy here including underneath the Grindavik area here as you can see on the map space weather activity well, fairly neutral across the board here, looking at mainly sea flare activity and occasional M flare or two, but um, I'm really not seeing anything major going on right now. We got a C 5.7 coming in right now from a uh, sunspot out here. Looks like that's coming off of a uh, far side sunspot on the eastern limb. 
we do have a couple different active regions here. Former sunspots, when, when they were out here a couple weeks ago, they've gone a, a full trip around the backside of the sun, and now they're coming back into the Earth-directed view. They'll get renamed. They uh, look quite active out here, so a little bit of sea flare activity uh, coming in from the eastern limb from numerous sunspots that were once uh, out here on the Earth-facing side, coming back for the second time, maybe even the third or fourth time. It's hard to keep track of them. Uh, so there's a little bit of complexity with the sunspot area down here. Notice the blue, red, green all close together in proximity, indicating some compl uh, complex activity there. Uh, and there's some other stuff going on further out there on the southeastern limb that we'll watch here in the coming days. Uh, keep an eye on this region here still. It is in the Earth-directed view. and it looks fairly dynamic, so we'll continue to keep an eye on that. As uh, far as uh, flare threat goes, about 20% chance for an X flare, M flare at 70, C flare around 99% chance. Not uh, not seeing anything recent here, but we'll continue to keep an eye on some of these sunspots. As uh, far as the auroras go, uh, detailed forecast here looks like maybe tomorrow night we got a G1 a class storm kicking up here. That's if everything comes together. We're not really expecting much. It's going to just be a brief. Um, event here uh, maybe kp index up around the five or so uh, that could stir up some of the auroras up at the higher latitudes there alaska canada uh, greenland iceland area and maybe down here to the northern tier states we'll check back in on this though tomorrow uh, severe weather outlook here tonight uh, a little bit of thunderstorm activity uh, tomorrow a different story look at this we got a severe weather event possible up here in washington and oregon goodness I wish that was down here a little bit more towards the Chico area of California, but these guys got a wind and some hail threat out there. Uh, if I wasn't uh, a good six hours away, maybe a little bit more, I would drive up there to cover that event because uh, not too often do you see a slight risk category up here for severe weather in Oregon. But uh, yeah, look out for tomorrow. Wind and hail threats. No tornado potential up there, but uh, we do have a 2% across portions of Ohio, Kentucky. If you're in that area tomorrow, keep an eye on the sky. All right, uh, let's take a look here. There's that hurricane out here, out in the Atlantic. That's gonna continue to track northward. And um, as we put these weather models into motion here, uh, see what we got as we come into the end of August. I'm not seeing anything stir up here in terms of anything entering into the Gulf of Mexico far as hurricane status goes so that's good news for now uh, but that's a ways out so we'll double check that uh, here in a uh, couple days uh, a little bit cooler weather pattern out here for california that low pressure out there uh, off into the eastern pacific just off the coast here oregon and northern california is going to be responsible for that uh, severe weather potential in oregon and washington tomorrow unfortunately goodness there's going to be a lot of thunderstorm potential on that includes lightning strikes so hopefully you know there's a precipitation uh potential out there as well otherwise we could see a whole array of new fires start up out here even in northern california northward so goodness hopefully uh, hopefully if we get any lightning strikes everything will be wet kind of looks like a face out here doesn't it got two eyes right here got a nose and even a mouth down here across mexico what is going on so, uh, yeah, anyway, that's going to bring some cooler weather out here for Northern California. Below average temperatures. I'm liking it. Um, that's not going to last for too long, though. Uh, maybe the majority of next of this coming week here. Next week. I'll take it. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Um, <laughs> right, I'm not even paying attention to this area over here because right now I'm not out there, but... Uh, those areas are going to cook. Got some uh, hot temperatures coming up there to the northern plains and Midwest states and the Great Lake states as well. Uh, and in fact, August, the end of August, man, looks, look at this. A massive high pressure dome. Looks like it may be centered over the Texas area. Going to keep everyone nice and toasty as we uh, head towards the end of August. And um, well, after that, we'll just see what happens here. It's kind of an odd year. We've cooked out here in California for the whole month of July. Well, a lot of June and July. July was one of our hottest months ever on record. 
and I am tired of it. I'm not even going to lie. It's I am done with the heat out here, so I want the cooler weather. Bring on winter time, please. All right, folks. Um, trying to think if there's anything else going on here. Little little earthquake activity coming into Japan right now. That's a seismograph station there in Japan. Um, don't see anything coming up yet. Not a big earthquake, but uh, it is registering up there on the seismos. And uh, let's see here. A little spike there on Yellowstone, but we'll see what happens, right? California still be on guard out here. You know, we got these uh, the various earthquakes popping up at the same time in a couple different locations, indicating regional strain out here. So uh, got to be on guard here for some potentially larger scale movement here in the future. And that could be the near future. Just always good to be prepared, folks. Have a good night. We'll catch you guys back out here in the morning for the Saturday morning update. I'm going to gonna call it a night. Take care, folks.